Hello, my name is Jeremiah K. Mills, and my email is jeremiahkmills at gmail.com. I've actually explained it in some of the videos, so if you can see it right there, J-E-R-E-M-I-A-H, K. Mills, M-I-L-L-S, at gmail.com. I want to talk to you all today about covetousness and idolatry, and just explain a bit about what those terms actually mean and how they they actually apply rather than just looking at them like words like the world does they just look at things like this just words like oh yeah Jesus I believe in him oh the Trinity yeah I believe in that oh yeah um Christmas I believe in that Easter yeah I believe in that and I, it's just like no one does anything past the persona the the Latin word facio the Greek word prosopon, it's just everything is thin, the face, right? The Hebrew word would be panin. So just to show you that prosopon, I might not always spell this correctly, but the, the face. Prosopolites is the word fear of face. It was translated respect of persons. So to fear a face. Now, in the Latin the word is facio, facio, and you can see that in words like official or office, you see the face there. So, And then in the Hebrew, the word is panim, panim, and it'll tell you that the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the water. So we can see how these words relate here. So prosopolites is the word fear of face. I, I suck fear of face in here just because I'm telling you that's related to prosopon. So people fear men's faces. You say, you don't celebrate Christmas, you cannot be a part of this family. Okay, well I'm a part of God's family, so that's better than being a part of this family that is insane. I'll be right back, I have to grab an eraser. <laughs> Sorry about that. So, what... What happens is people will fear men's faces, and therefore, if you fear something, you reverence it. You reverence what you fear. It, the scriptures say to fear God, right? So, alright, so what we're going to do is we're going to explain idolatry. I, and we're going to go ahead and write the Greek word, it is idolon, or idolo la tria, idolo la tria, or idolo la truo. I don't always spell these exactly right, but for the time being, bear with me, you can just go to Blue Letter Bible and type in idolatry and look, look it up. So, it might be idolo la truo, but... What idolon is, is idolon means image. And latruo, or latria, whenever you see that ia, that's used, that means the quality. It's, a, it's qualitative. One who is an idolater, just like Sophia. Sophia means, it's qualitative. It means like one who is wise, the wisdom, right? The wisdom of something, the idolatry of something, right? Since we're talking about people, it will be the idolatry of people, or the wisdom of people, or it might be speaking of the wisdom of God, or the worship of God. Not idolatry is the worship of idols, that's bad, right? So, since latria means to serve, it means to serve an image. Image serving, service. Now, in the scriptures, it says that a covetous man is an idolater. So, covetous, covetous, we'll write covetousness, is pleonexia. Pleonexia. And what that means, is it means to want more. The scripture says, if you want more, and that means not content, not content, 
If you're not content with the things that God has provided you, not content because you want more, the scriptures say that you are pleonexia, or pleonectos, pleonectos. It, pleonexia says that you are, you want more, and it calls you, it, oh sorry, the way that you show the ido in the Greek is actually E-I-D-O. So, ido lo latria. If you are wanting more, alright, wanting more here, wanting more, you are a image server. Server. 